Hey guys, Shane here from Tukadag 3D Printing and welcome back for another 3D printing vlog. Hey guys, welcome back. So today, again, is a great day because it's mail day and we got a couple goodies in. So let's dive right into it and see what we got. The first thing we got is a new USB cable. So I got a longer USB cable for the FT5 in order to fit because my you know, uh, laptop's here and the FT5 is over here. So I needed a longer cable so that we don't have to keep moving the laptop because I'm lazy and my desk doesn't have big for all that. So new USB cable for that. So I also got some more limit switches for the G-Tech. So the Z has been giving me a little bit of issues with an inconsistent home. So I picked up some new ones of these. They're I mean, basically disposable. I think they were $2 uh, for three of them. And I'll take one off, put that on there and see if we can get a little bit better of a consistent click every time and a consistent home. And that'll help out with leveling that a little bit better. So I was really waiting for this. This is the tablet holder that I've been waiting for for my tripod. And this will enable me to set my tablet right below, because I'm looking at the camera now, and now I'm looking at my tablet. I want to be able to just look right up near it and put this right underneath so that I can, you know, have better eye contact, a little bit easier to see the camera. I won't have to keep looking down to see what I want to look at. Um, it's super simple. Just twist to unlock, twist to lock. And I like this because it has the quarter inch uh, mount on here so that I can screw it onto any tripod, but I have the little uh, arm on here so I can kind of position it however I want to, which it'll go just like that underneath. So this will be real nice and you'll notice it here later once I put it on. And this one, and uh, again, I wanted to have some more nozzles. So these are 0.4 or 0.3, this is the kit. I think these ones are, oh, these ones are 0.4. So I have some more coming in. Like, and these were really cheap, so I kind of wanted to just try out real nice, cheap uh, brass nozzles just to see how they would last. I also want to do a test where I want to run an exotic filament through it for, you know, a day or two and see what the damage is because I'm, I'm kind of curious if I can clean it out enough. That's going to be a thing. If I can clean it enough and see down in there, maybe I can try and cut it once I get my tools, cut it open, scrape it out, and then see if we can see what the damage looks like. Y'all should know what this is. It's a maker box. So this is the August maker box that just came in. Um, super excited, I loved the first one. I got a great response from people and from the manufacturers and actually had more of them sending me more filament to test out, which is, you know, beyond belief, it's awesome. So I have this one now. There's gonna be a separate video on this in the very near future. As I said about companies hitting me up, so Toner Plastics saw my video and hit me up on Facebook. We took it to email and they're like, hey, we like to review. Would you like to try some other filament from us? I said, of course I would. So here we have Toner Plastic PLA and this is their, what color is this? Rich Teal, which is pretty cool. I've never had a teal filament before. So got that. And we have a translucent red Pet G. And I do have a, a PLA that is translucent red, which is the Proto Paradigm and just one of their little $5 rolls. But to do a big roll, to do something like a vase, I really wanted to do a vase and now I have enough filament to do that with a translucent color. So before I added the light bar to the FT5, which I still have to do a little video about that, I originally thought about using just LED strips, but you needed some way to control them. So here's a little 12 volt, controller, IR controller. So with this, if I was to install them, I could just use this, turn them on and off, increase the intensity, decrease it. I still might give this a try though, just because I can't adjust them with the bars. The bars are really cool, but it's really not great for the filming of it. It's great for me to watch it, but for filming, I might have to just readjust where they are because I'm getting so much glare from them because they're so bright on the glass print bed. So we're gonna give this a try eventually. I have two, uh, I think 50 foot rolls of LEDs. So I can, LEDs everywhere. We're gonna put that on one day and this is what we need in order to be able to turn them on and off instead of you know, making my own plug or something like that. But this is much better. For the FT5, I redid a lot of the wiring and so I went ahead and picked up some red and black. I believe this is 12 or 14 gauge. This is audio hookup wire and it's very, very flexible, which is really what you need for putting it through the 
chain links on the FT5 or any type of printer that has, that's using chain links. You want something that's super duper flexible. I'm also probably gonna use this on the GTEC to upgrade some of the cabling on that because the cabling that comes with it is pretty cheap and this is much, much higher quality stuff. So we're gonna use this. The last little bit of wire that I got is a kit of 10 22 gauge wire. So this was originally gonna be used on the FT5, but I, this took forever to ship to me and I ended up getting the ribbon cable much faster so let's talk about what's going on right now. I just finished up the Hatchbox wood filament review, but you can see some parts back here, and that turned out fantastic. Love the filament, would love to print more with it, but I have to move on to something else because the filament is just rolling in right now, and I have to get things printing because I only have two printers. But speaking of printers, rumor has it that I have a Delta printer coming in from China. So there's a company that hit me up, I'm not gonna say anything about them yet, but they hit me up and said, hey, we liked your videos, we'd like to send you a Delta printer to try out, and it's a mini costal style. It's like, great, would love to try that out. So it's a kit, and there's gonna be a video series about me assembling it. I don't know if I'm gonna do like step-by-step -step as their instructions, or if I'm gonna do like a big time-lapse and talk over it. I'm unsure of how I want to film that yet, but I am gonna do a video series on building it, then I'm gonna do a video review on it, and then it's gonna be, become another workhorse for me in order so I can print out three different types of filament at once because with all the different ones I'm getting right now, it's getting a little hard to prioritize time on how many prints I want to do, because I want to print you know, almost a whole roll, or if I want to do a large print on the FT5, can't really do that because that would take up days and I have to keep swapping everything out on the GTEC. And I really wanted to Delta because they're just great, cool looking printers and I really want to try one out. So if anybody hits me up, they can, I can try and help them out with it. All right, so next let's move over to the FT5 and I'll show you a couple things that I've been doing on that and there's gonna be a more in-depth video coming out, but here I'll give you a little snapshot of what I'm working on. Okay, here we are at the FT5. So a few things I want to show you. This is the Cossel filament spool that I had grabbed off Thingiverse and it worked out really, really well, except for when the spool would travel and come against the bolts that were here a lot of the spools have you know, slots in the side of them. So when I say slots, they have these ribs or something. Like Hatchbox have nice flat spools, but this one doesn't. So as it would roll by on some of them, the bolt would get stuck in here and it would hold the roll and then we would get you know, filament grind because it can't pull it down and it's just grinding on the same spot and we have a bad day. So I figured that out actually when I was printing with wood PLA and I've made a adjustment. So this is my new filament spool here. So you can see right here on the side, I've added this extra flat piece. So it sticks, normal one sticks like this. And you can see there's nothing there. But this piece here is a kind of protector against the filament spool hitting against these. So it, it's really good because it holds 81 millimeter filament spool and it can ride on something that's nice and smooth. So you don't have to worry about that happening again. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is, as you see on here, this looks a little bit different. So I am using a 12 volt silicone heating pad now. It's 12 volt, 280 watt. So it's pretty much near the max of the stock PSU that the Forgetech FT5 comes with. I've already blown a fuse. And I think that's just because, I don't know, it was weak or something, but it says it's three amp, 250 volt. So, it blew out. I put in the replacement one and it's been holding strong ever since. But I did go out and I picked up some spares to have on hand just in case it happened again. I also plan on doing a PSU upgrade and a 12 volt to 12 volt uh, SSR. I don't want to do the 120 volt heater bed because I don't think you need that. I want to try this out first and see how it goes because a lot of people aren't doing it and I think it's a valid option. So in order to have this happen is the aluminum PCB heater is down here, the build plate, and that is acting as my ground level. Then I have a piece of 12 by 12 cork, which you can get for them in a pack for I think $5 on Amazon. I'll put the links for everything down in the video description. Then I have the silicone heating pad. Then I have my piece of 12 by 12 glass, or 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters, which is what it's supposed to be in the metric system. And then I have it clamped down using the, the binder clips that come with the printer in the four corners. And using the, you know, having the, V6, the E3D V6 on here is great because it doesn't hit any of these binder clips anymore because on the old stock cooler, the stock, I should say, the stock heater, you know, hot end mixed with the cooler 
fan, the print fan in the back, would cause it to actually hit these binder clips and make them go flying. And that was just bad. I actually chipped a piece of the glass because of that. But now that's not an issue anymore. So that's, that's really great now. I didn't talk about, is like I said, I added on the LEDs here. So I'll show you what it looks like when they're all on. So you can see it's like a blinding light. There's six of them, two in the front, one up top, one on top back, and two in the back. Again, I might have to just adjust the, the way their angle is or maybe take the back ones out and only be lit from one side or try and figure something else out, but it's just way too bright. It looks great though. I mean, not from what you're seeing because it's all blown out, but it looks really good, I think. And it's nice to watch a print, but to record with it, not a valid option. So I picked up this little finishing tool and it's called a deburring tool from Chuck Hellebuck's channel. And I'll put a link up to his channel here. And I like it, so it works out pretty well. So if you guys would like to see a little quick review on this, you know, let me know down below. I'll do it real quick, put a link to where you can get it from. I'll put that in the description already. Uh, but if you'd like to see a quick tutorial on how to use it and what it, you know, what it does for you, then let me know and we'll, we'll check it out. So last, let's talk about what I've been doing. So right now I'm getting ready to upload the Hashbox Wood video, which will be coming out very soon, shortly after this, because I'm gonna edit this, put this up first, and then that'll come out. And then I'm working on All Professional 3D, PEPG, and all professional 3D PLA. So they have a brand new gunmetal gray PLA, which is kind of a translucent color. It's so far, it's pretty good. You know, Andreas out there has been a fantastic source of information for me for printing as I had problems with PETG because I had never used it before, but now I got it on board. I know how fast to print it. I know what the you know, infills should be and, and all the various <laughs> things to learn when you print a new filament. I'm learning that and it, the prints are coming out really, really good now. So I'm gonna do some more prints with that and that's good video is gonna come out. The PLA will be coming out next. I have the Make, Maker Box gonna be coming out. I'll probably do that one here soon. I have one, two, three, four, five, six other filaments that I need to review that are just here right now. So that's six more videos right there. I wanna do other tutorial videos and things on the GTEC and the FT5 of what I'm doing on those things you saw what I want to do on the FT5 already with the silicon heat bed and the lighting system and adding in the other lights using the using the controller with just, you know, the what I think they were 50 50 or 50 80 LED strips. So a lot more content to come up. And I'm really looking forward to all of it and I really hope you guys are going to be subscribed to it so you can see everything that's coming up. So if you guys want to help me out more than like and subscribe, you can always become a patron on my channel. I'll put the link right here and I'll put it down in the video description below. My first goal through Patreon is $30 a month. That way I can buy a new roll of filament of any type each month and review it here on the channel. And the only way I can make that happen is with your guys' help. So that's it for the vlog this week, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Give you a little behind the scenes, things I'm working on, things that are coming up, what you can expect and how you can help out. Patreon. So until next time, guys, happy printing.